So Bruce, let's start this off by me asking you what uh, Get Assist does and who it's for. Get Assist is where business meets social on a single connected network. It's two communities or two memberships, business and social, and we connect them with different features like making a request for assistance. Small businesses buy a membership, they put in their service category and service area, and when somebody on the network, social or business, makes a request, they get a push notification and they're able to talk directly with the customer. The social membership is private, manageable, ad-free social media where you can create private communities to have intimate conversations with or connections with the, the people or communities that you're connected with in your life. So let's talk a little bit more about the latter half of what Get Assist does, because that I find absolutely fascinating. The fact that you could have these private actual networks here uh, where you're not subject to third party advertisers, because as we've seen from the Cambridge Analytica scandal, uh, Facebook didn't necessarily take much of a hit in terms of actual raw numbers of users. They certainly took a bit of a PR hit. Uh, you made the argument recently in an op-ed that we shouldn't have to kind of sign away our privacy rights in order to be using a social media site, and yet that's seemingly what so many of us do. Yeah, that, that, that's correct. And, and Facebook didn't take a hit because Facebook is entertainment. Um, these aren't about private conversations. And without privacy, you don't have any intimacy. And without intimacy, you're really not connecting with the people who matter most. You don't stand in a crowded area and you know share intimate things about your family, your business, or anything else. Um, we don't believe that we need to collect your data, let alone share with anyone, and we don't. Um, our, our social membership allows you to use well-known social features, very similar to every other site, news feeds, other connections, um, where you create private or public communities. Um, each of these communities has their own well-known social features. So when you create a community for your family, it's like your own private Facebook, only there's no advertising and it's absolute privacy. When we say private, we mean private at Get Assist. You, uh, you, there's many features in there, but it's a way to reconnect with your family. And what you do is all these different communities in your life, because communities are just that, groups of like-minded people, um, allows you to um, be members of various private communities. And on your newsfeed, you're seeing things from across your life, whether it's your grandson, um, your children on vacation, your sales team, your, your business group, anybody. You refer to, in your opinion piece, a, a column that was recently in the Wall Street Journal basically making the argument that online privacy is dead and we should just all accept that. Uh, that seems to be the growing chorus when we are hearing from tech experts and the like. You, however, don't see it that way. Um, how did you come to conclude that you could actually have a social media site without you know, putting everybody's privacy and their own you know, intimate details in jeopardy? If it's doable, why aren't the other big, why aren't the other big guys doing it? Well, they're not doing it because they don't want to, uh, they're afraid to give up the big returns that they get off the advertising revenues. And you're, the, you're, you're their content, right? You're their product. Um, and, you know, I, I saw Get Assist as a means to use the best communication tool of our time to connect people purposefully. Took this typical social media model and then we added a traditional business model to it that would support ad-free social. And, and that's what we're doing. We, we don't believe you have to uh, sell people's data to have a successful network. And this whole other aspect of Facebook, you know, they did a, a huge PR effort and uh, you were prompted in the aftermath of the Cambridge Analytica scandal to go on the site and rejig your privacy settings that you could somehow manage to control your data in a way that it would not then, you know, be subject to nefarious motives, let's say. However, you do make the case in your opinion piece that that's not really what happens. Your data, even when you do click private on a big site like Facebook, isn't necessarily private. It's never private. Uh, these networks, if you read their terms of use, you'll find that, you know, you, you lose ownership of your data. It's not, it's not copyrighted. Your pictures aren't either. Um, these sites are never going to get away from uh, collecting and using your data. That's what they do. If Facebook stopped doing that with their current model, Facebook would be over. Because we're the product. Because so you're the product. To sell us. If, if, if they ever came up with a model where they said, we'll give you absolute privacy and uh, and we won't share your content, we won't advertise to you without your permission, 
uh, that would be devastating for Facebook. Now, are you, I, I admit readily that I can sometimes uh, be a bit of a tinfoil hat wearer. That is to say, I'm concerned <laughs> constantly about my privacy and where we're heading uh, as a society with, you know, some more intimate aspects of our data being up for sale and up for grabs and the like. And then, of course, you have hackers that can get into things that perhaps they, they shouldn't be able to get into. How did you come uh, to be so concerned with issues like privacy yourself? Well, like I said, without privacy, there's no intimacy. I looked at Facebook and I thought, I can't use this. Yeah. It's got nothing there for me. I can't connect with my family. I can't see my grandson on there. I can't use it for business. Um, I can use it to look at cat videos. I can, you know, I can use it. There's some funny things on there. It's entertaining. And I can see the entertainment value of it. You know, a lot of people it's a, use it. They spend a lot of time on it. Nothing wrong with Facebook. But you've got to be aware that you know, you're, you, you, you're not getting value for what they're taking from you. Another big thing that uh, comes up as criticism for both Twitter and Facebook is this whole notion that there are a lot of anonymous accounts or a lot of fake accounts on there, a lot of bot accounts. How does GetAssist uh, combat some of that? Well, you have to have a verified account. Um, you, you have to have a verified email and we use CAPTCHA, as a lot of sites do, to make sure it's not computers coming on. And then each community has an administrator or whoever created it, and they can watch the content. They have complete control over that community, so they can take down content, they can block users. They so they're can like the moderators, essentially? Exactly. So like I said, when you create a community, it's your own private Facebook. So if you create it and you're mom, you know, you have a section called What's New that's exclusive to you. Um, then there's a bulletin board and events and other things but you have control over the membership you have control over the content so at the end of the day you control your community and what goes on in it so it's it's user controlled do you think people i mean all over the world but canada more specifically do you think we take our issues uh with privacy and data protection as seriously as perhaps we should no no we don't um that's to say for the people that use Facebook in general, I don't think they do. I don't think they're quite aware of how exposed they are. Uh, the rest of the population isn't using it for anything that's intimate. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and those folks should re-log back on and, and to get assist and check out what that private experience is like because we have big dwell times. The people who use us, they love it. And you'll see that uh, what goes on there is, is mostly private. That's what we find, that probably 80% of the use is, is private. Bruce, in your opinion piece, you also make reference to Yelp and the hilarious uh, South Park episode in which they basically pillory the the, the platform of Yelp. Um, Yelp, though, is one of those tools that I think a lot of small businesses kind of look to to be able to get referrals and to have good reviews for. Get Assist, however, works on a much more comprehensive level for small business owners. If I am driving in my car right now and I own a small business, why would I want to go and download get assist you want to join the fastest growing network and probably the only network that's been built to to cater to you to the small business person it's a full-blown social media type site for small business we haven't been connected before this is a real opportunity for canada for the world for small business people to get together build a network where our local community can reach us where we can reach each other and uh and, and join the 21st century so Bruce, I'm sure a lot of our listeners now are wondering how they can get get assist. How would you advise them to go about that? Um, you can go to, to www.getassist.com or you can download either app in the appropriate stores.